Let's begin by discussing the anatomy of the endocrine system, as well as the different types of hormones. The endocrine system allows the various organ systems within the body to communicate with each other and to coordinate their activities. This is accomplished by the means of endocrine organs that secrete key hormones. The overall effect of the endocrine system is to contribute to homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a stable internal environment. The body contains both endocrine and exocrine glands. Endocrine glands produce hormones which they release directly into the blood circulation. These hormones travel through the blood to their target sites. Exocrine glands, on the other hand, release their products into ducts. These are directly connected to their targets. The major organs and glands of the endocrine system. The pituitary gland, made up of the anterior and posterior lobe. The thyroid gland. On the thyroid gland are two parathyroid glands. In the chest is the thymus gland. On top of each kidney is the suprarenal gland. The pancreas and the gonads which are the testes in the male and the ovaries in the female. Endocrine hormones can target cells locally or at distant sites. Hormones are chemicals that are produced in one cell type and then travel some distance and affect the target cell. The hormones of the endocrine system can be divided into four major categories. Number one, amino acid derivatives. Number two, peptide hormones, number three, steroid hormones, and number four, eicosanoids. The activity of the endocrine system is controlled by endocrine reflexes, which are triggered by humoral stimuli, such as a change in the extracellular fluid, humoral stimuli in response to a specific hormone, or neural stimuli, neurotransmitter action at a neuroglanular junction. The following are examples of hormones derived from amino acids. Examples of amino acid derivatives include epinephrine and norepinephrine and thyroxine. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are made in the adrenal glands when they affect heart rate and blood pressure. Thyroxine, or T4, is made in the thyroid as it involved in whole body metabolism. Amino acid derived hormones may function through extracellular or intracellular receptors, depending on the identity of the hormone itself. Peptide hormones are hormones that are synthesized from amino acids, and like most proteins, they're processed in the endoplasmic reticulum, including the processes of glycosylation. Examples of peptide hormones include luteinizing hormone which stimulates ovulation in women and testosterone production in males, and antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone has the very important function of regulating the body's fluid retention. The third major group of hormones are steroid hormones, and these hormones are derivatives of cholesterol and they're made in the process called steroidogenesis. This multi-step process leads to the formation of various hormones. Examples of this class include estrogen. Estrogen is involved with growth and development of females. A second example is testosterone. Testosterone is involved in the growth and development of males. The fourth group of hormones are known as eicosanoids. These are derived via the oxidation of fatty acids. Arachidonic acid can be converted into the following. Number one, prostaglandins, and these are involved in inflammatory responses. Number two, prostacyclins. These prevent the formation of the platelet plug. Number three, thromboxanes. These are vasoconstrictor molecules. The formation of these icosanoids is facilitated by the enzyme cyclooxygenase and cyclooxygenase is a target of COX inhibitors such as aspirin.
Icosanoids are derived via the oxidation of fatty acids. The arachidonic acid enzyme cyclooxygenase is a target of COX inhibitors such as aspirin, and overall, icosanoids affect enzyme processes in the extracellular fluid.